And welcome everyone to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are a plant-based fitness nutrition company. Thank you for joining us here on Amazon Live, on Facebook Live, and later on YouTube at Clean Machine Online. Disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes only, and it is intended to educate. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So this one is pumping iron. And, you know, I, I've had a few comments lately about uh, people on the uh, carnivore diet, which is kind of sad, but it's all right. I'm here to educate. And, and I sincerely and honestly want to help people. Um, and one of the things they were, you know, people were saying is that heme iron, which is only, which is found in, in animals, humans too as well, we produce it as well, just like other animals do. Heme iron is better absorbed than uh, plant-based iron. And this is actually true. Um, and now we know that's actually a problem. So there was an interesting uh, study that was just published by the British Society of Gastroenterology, and they issued new guidelines that said, hey, we were wrong about iron all along. More is not better. More is actually worse. So I'll explain that because they actually deep dive into this and show why actually inhibiting the amount of iron you get so that it's slowly and smallly uh, small doses amounts are eased into the bloodstream is much better. And guess what? That's exactly what plants do. See, plants actually surround the iron with antioxidants. And that's because iron is a metal. Metals can rust or oxidize. They can do that in the presence of moisture <laughs> and oxygen. So that's where you get a bad situation happening in the body. But let's jump back to this study because this study really explains pretty much in a nutshell, the researchers saying, hey, we were wrong about iron altogether. You shouldn't be consuming iron higher doses that get into the bloodstream rapidly. Actually, their recommendations, and I'm gonna read this directly to you. Oh, let's first go ahead and put up the link so those of you watching can actually uh, look along with it. I'll post that link right now, and I'll bring it up on the screen for a second so people can see it on the screen. Um, for those of you watching on Amazon Live, the, the name of the study, if you wanna type it into Google, uh, is the British Society of Gastroenterology Guidelines for the Management of Iron Deficiency Anemia in Adults. So here's what they found. The British Society has published new guidelines for the management of iron deficiency anemia in adults, or IDA, iron deficiency anemia. One of the recommendations is that oral iron intake should be administered in smaller doses and less frequently than previously advised. So why is that? <laughs> and this is where it gets really interesting. One of the, and, and I'm quoting directly from the study, quote, one of the interesting developments of the last few years is that we have been giving people too much iron. The problem is that it causes side effects unquote. Quote again, a daily dose of 15 milligrams of iron was as effective as 50 or even 150 milligrams of iron in terms of actual hemoglobin red blood cell response with a lower incidence of adverse effects. So, you know, People were complaining, hey, wait a minute, we need the higher heme iron found in animal products. Actually, that's wrong. That's worse for you. And why is that? I'm going to explain the actual hormonal response that's going on in the body and why the body intentionally tries to stop that heme iron from entering into our bloodstream. You know, they used to think, oh, phytic acid, right? It binds or chelates to the iron in plants. And this makes it worse because it's less absorbable. Now, what it's actually doing is regulating the amount of ironing iron that is going into the bloodstream. So you get small amounts, lower at a time, and then the body can take that and store that in the liver and then only enter it into the bloodstream when it needs it. 
So why does the body not want a high dose of iron entering into the bloodstream? Like what you do get when you consume heme iron in an animal, a big steak or a hamburger or something like that, you get this flood of heme iron. Well, what happens is the body produces from the liver, hence the name of the hormone actually, it's called hepcidin, H-E-P, H-E-P just is hepatic or liver. So the liver actually produces this to block the iron from coming in and actually regulate its utilization and get it quickly stored. So here's, here's again, um, so here's a quote from the study, oral doses of just 60 milligrams of iron. Now, they're not saying this right here in this sentence, but what they're talking about is heme iron, right? The animal-based iron. So 60 milligrams of heme iron stimulate hepcidin for the next 24 hours, thus reducing all subsequent iron absorption by up to almost 50%. So if you're eating that big steak and then you eat liver in the evening, you're probably getting almost none of that iron or at least almost half of it not being absorbed correctly at all. So it's much better, they found out, because the body has a self-regulating uh, uh, process called hepcidin that blocks that iron from getting into the bloodstream. So why does the body not want that much iron in the bloodstream? Is an iron good? Doesn't it build blood? Well, yes, it does, but too much, more than our body can process at a time, leaves free iron, iron that is not bound to anything. Remember, if, if it's bound to antioxidants, it's not going to oxidize, right? Because it's got antioxidants. Phytic acid prevents that from happening. Phytic acid prevents the oxidation of the iron. But when you eat an animal-based iron, it's already in its free state and it can oxidize with oxygen, creating free radicals and damaging effects in the body. That circulating oxidized can start damaging tissues, cell tissues, protein tissues, fat tissues, lipid, lipid peroxidation uh, causation. This can damage the arteries. This can set up real negative processes. So the body has this wonderful thing in place to actually prevent animal-based free hem, heme iron from getting into the bloodstream. Our own body produces that and says, stop putting that animal iron in my body, get out of here. Now that leads to another problem. So when the body actually is blocking, is producing hepcidin because it's saying you're getting too much iron in there, which is causing free radical production, causing mayhem inside my body, stop that animal iron from coming in here, then it stays in the digestive tract. And this is where it becomes a bigger problem. Okay, so the next study I'm gonna put up, let me take this one down. Oof. It's really sad to see this, this study, but at least once we know what's going on, you'll have the chance to do something about it. Uh, and I'll put it up on the screen for those of you watching on Facebook Live. Um, actually, it's too big. I put the whole thing up there instead of just the study. Let me actually grab just this. The, for those of you watching on Amazon Live, the title of this study is called Heme Iron from Meat and the Risk of Colorectal Cancer, a Meta-Analysis and a Review of the Mechanisms Involved. So this study is really cool because one, it's a meta-analysis. So it's looking at all the available studies that are well done, well proposed, you know, well, well designed studies. Make sure they're randomized, double blind, placebo controlled, all that kind of stuff. And that they're large studies, not just small numbers, small n numbers, which is like 10 or less, but real good population studies and looked at. And then the second part of why this study is so important is because it's a review of the actual mechanisms involved, not just saying, hey, observational, you know, you eat meat, higher risk of colon cancer. No, this is actually looking at how that meat consumption causes that. And what it is, is the heme iron. So we know that eating red meat and especially processed meat can lead to higher risk for colon cancer. But here's the thing, when they started digging down, what is it that's causing that? 
the highest consumption of heme iron led to a 32% increased risk of colon cancer. Now, this is really important because in the U.S., colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death. It is killing more people than everything except lung cancer from cigarette smokes. So this is just me, just the heme iron that's only in animal products. Remember, plants have non-heme iron that's bound to phytates and then uh, to protect against too much getting into the bloodstream. But the animal-based iron is free iron and, and, and gets into the system quickly and causes oxidant reaction and then tells the body to block even more of that iron coming in, which leads to a buildup of heme iron in the gut and into the colon. And then this heme iron oxidizes in the colon. And I'll read directly from the study. Let me go ahead and uh, put the study up there so you guys can read it too as well. Heme iron has a catalytic effect on the endogenous, that's inside our body, endogenous form formation of carcinogenic in nitroso compounds. In nitroso compounds are carcinogenic or cancer creating. Genesis meaning create and carcino meaning cancer. Cancer creating nitrosamines, right? And uh, in nitrosamines. So this is one mechanism that's stimulating cancer growth by that heme iron. Two, the form formation of cytotoxic and genotoxic, that means it's affecting our DNA, our genetic makeup too as well. It's overstimulating the genes to grow, 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 and growth you will have. That's called a cancer cell when it grows uncontrollably. So that's horrible because the genotoxic aldehydes, so what are aldehydes? They're, uh, well, formaldehyde is one of the aldehydes that you've probably heard of. It preserves dead tissue, right? And, and that's what it does. Um, but it's so toxic. Aldehydes are actually formed when you drink alcohol. Alcohol, you drink it. It's not so much the alcohol itself that causes the damage, but alcohol is broken down in our body into acetaldehyde, which is an acetyl uh, molecule stuck to an al aldehyde molecule. That acetaldehyde is extremely toxic, up to 300 times more toxic than the actual alcohol itself. So if you, our body can break down and eliminate that acetaldehyde, we won't have any toxic effects. And that's why that aldehyde group is often causing cancer. Aldehydes created by heme iron in our colon causing cancer. Aldehydes from alcohol, uh, especially in excess or abusive alcohol like alcoholics, high incidence of cancer. It's because that acetyl acetaldehyde in alcohol is forming cancer cells just like this um, genotoxic aldehyde uh, formed and created by heme iron is causing this formation of cancer cells in our colon. Now, here's the good news then. Again, when remember, you got that cancer forming. It's two different pathways of forming. First, you've got uh, oxidation of it, which is free radical damage all over your colon. And then it's causing inflammation because of that. So that sets yourself up for cancer already. But then they found actually two different mechanisms, uh, nitrosamines, which are super cancer causing, and then cytotoxic and genotoxic aldehydes. Cytotoxic means it's toxic to the cell. It actually can kill the cells. Genotoxic means it can disrupt the actual genes in the cells causing cancer cell growth. Now this is pretty, pretty damning for anybody consuming meat. And remember, these, uh, these, this heme iron is in almost all animal products, even worse in, in, in red meat. And, uh, but you can see the damage and the direct link of the causality of heme iron to uh, colon, colon cancer. Now, what they found about the heme iron is it doesn't stop there. The heme iron, if it does get into the bloodstream and starts causing these damages and starts forming these um, compounds inside the body, once it gets past the gut, you know, it's actually a good thing that the body is actually keeping it out of the bloodstream. But if you're eating this on a regular basis, some of this is getting in and you're getting too much heme iron into the bloodstream. 
And, and there's study after study. I'll just read them off to you. Heme iron intake associated with coronary heart risk disease because the oxidation on the heart tissue. Uh, heme iron and intake acute myo myocardial infarction. That's a heart attack. Uh, a, a prospective study in men, because this is looking at men with the highest rates of heart attack and found, yep, yeah, the higher the rates of heme iron consumption, the higher the rates of heart attack. Uh, cancer, iron and cancer risk, a systematic review and meta-analysis of all of the uh, research available. Uh, stroke, heme iron intake and risk of stroke, a prospective study of men, again, because men have higher rates of stroke and higher consumption of especially red meat, where this heme iron is coming from, heart attacks, stroke, heart disease, type 2 diabetes. Here's another study, dietary intake, body iron stores, and the risk of type 2 diabetes, a systematic review and meta-analysis. That's looking at all the data research out there on that. So this is just amazing. Disease state after disease state, all associated or directly linked, even looking at the causation. What causes this to happen in um and it's the heme iron so here is the good news with plants <laughs> remember we started out this conversation with this uh, carnivore diet folks saying oh you know phytic acid is 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 bound to the iron and, and prevents the absorption yeah about 35 percent of it which would be perfect for human beings how do the plants know to bind up the iron so only a little bit gets in at a time when we're constantly eating greens and stuff like this nuts and seeds and dried fruits all higher in iron that we're just getting a little bit at a time and that's exactly how our body can utilize it, how it uh, gets it so that it can store it and then release it into the bloodstream as it needs it. This is perfect. The plants have figured out the exact way. But the plants went one step further and then just making it, instead of making it, phytates are chelators. They bind to it. So even if you are eating those animal products and get heme iron that could oxidize in the bloodstream, well, those plants actually have antioxidants which come and neutralize it and that phytic acid remember it chelates it can do the same thing in the bloodstream so now that you've got this free radical heme iron floating around in your bloodstream that's causing damage right all of these cells heart attack stroke diabetes you know it's all causing this damage along comes this phytic acid thank you plants only found a plants right come over here and neutralize chelates it binds to that iron so it can be taken out of the system and prevent any of these diseases from happening thank you plants for having this wonderful phytic acid now phytic acid is uh, uh, called inositol uh, hexaphosphate so it's got um, five uh, phosphate molecules bound to one uh, inositol which is a b vitamin um, so what is, what's really cool about this, it's called IP6, actually hexaphosphate, is six molecules, IP6, right? And also uh, hexaphosphate. So IP6, I first learned about IP6 when I was working back at Vitamin Shop way long time ago. I was reading these cool studies. I had a customer come in and he said, look, he was almost in tears. And, and I said, what's going on? And he's like, I've tried everything and I've got a, what I'm not a watermelon, a grapefruit size tumor on my kidney and they want to take my kidney out. He goes, I don't want the surgery. I don't want that. Is there anything that you have? And I said, I was just reading about these amazing studies, but unfortunately as in supplements, I can't tell you anything about cancer, but the, the, the people that own this company have several practitioners, medical doctors that can talk to you about IP6. It's sold as a supplement. You can actually look up IP6 on Google or Amazon. They sell IP6 every day. So, and you can also look up studies on IP6 and cancer. There's tons of studies about IP6 and how it benefits. Remember, IP6 is phytic acid. It's the same thing, just another thing. So I said, tr you know, give it a try. Call, call the call the doctors at this company, and they can talk to you about how it works and what it can do and what to expect. I didn't hear from him for the longest time. Maybe three or four months passed, and I was, I was really concerned that he actually passed from from the kidney cancer. He came back into the store, and he just ran up to me and hugged me, and then just started crying just like sobbing. And I'm like, okay, this is a grown man. <laughs> What's going on? And he says, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said, 
after a couple of months, the tumor shrank down to a manageable size. They wanted to do radiation. I said, no, let's give it a little bit more. The tumor shrank and disappeared completely. He says, I don't have to get kidney surgery. They can't even find the cancer. And that's the kind of stuff that, man, makes what I do worth everything. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for moments like that, where I can truly help people through health and nutrition and education make a difference in their lives. And that is so rewarding to me. That means everything to me, um, what he said. And he got his life back, you know? He didn't have to go through that. And it's the benefit of the plants. The plants are creating these amazing phytochemicals to help protect us, help get the right amount of iron, little at a time, into us. You know, when I read this, the, the initial study of, about this, um, that, that they had it all wrong, that the uh, industry had it all wrong, that heme iron was better, and it's not, that high doses of iron are better, and it's not. And, and now we even understand how our body actually prevents high doses and why it causes cancer, heart attacks, stroke, diabetes in people. We know the mechanisms now. We need to get this education out to more people to let them know it's, it's what's in the animal products that you're consuming that are causing the disease. They, they don't just happen to you. It's not throw up your arms and say, God, why are you doing this to me? He's, <laughs> God's probably looking back down uh, and saying, hey, why are you doing that to yourself? Put something different in your mouth, man. Listen to the people who are plant-based and are in positive health mechanisms. So here's the last thing I want to leave you with, uh, phytates. Um, Dr. Greger did an amazing uh, series of videos on it. Uh, you check it out on nutritionfacts.org. Um, but the phytates were not only found to actually uh, prevent the cancers from, from growing. These are the I'm not talking a supplement here. I'm talking phytates naturally found in plants. So I'm not, not crossing the FDA line saying that uh, supplements do anything for, for disease states. All right. That's between you and your doctor. What I'm saying is phytates naturally occurring in plants have shown in published human studies to prevent cancer to stop it from growing from antiangenesis. So uh, once a cancer grows, it sends out blood vessels, right? And these blood vessels are where it gets its blood supply and taps in, and that's how it can stay alive and keep growing. If you can neutralize those blood vessels, it's called anti-angiogenesis, which, angio, um, which is blood vessels, and genesis is the creation. So you want to prevent the creation of those blood vessels so the cancer keep, can't keep growing. So this phytic acid actually prevents those uh, uh, different blood vessels from forming, but it does something so incredible. And when I read this, I was like, wow. It causes what's called um, cellular differentiation. So cellular differentiation is when a cell actually kind of, and I'm going to put it in a funny way, changes its mind and becomes something else it actually changes, right? Uh, so a stem cell can start out just as a stem cell, but differentiate to a bone cell, differentiate to a muscle cell. It can change itself into different forms. So that's what it's called. So IP6 or the uh, phytic acid that's in these plants actually can get into the cancer cells and get the genes to revert back to a normal, healthy cell. That, when I read that, I'm just like, floored. Changing a cancer cell back to a healthy human cell. Most people think cancer cells are an invader. They're not. They're our own cells gone berserk, right? They're our own cells growing out of control. And these phytates can go in there and trigger the cell to revert back to a healthy cell. Phenomenal, phenomenal. I was so excited to read this because this is what plants. And, you know, to hear people like from the carnivore diet saying, oh, phytic acids, they're bad for you. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. That's just nuts. These things are anti-cancer agents. 
that are actually preventing the cancer caused by the heme iron from animals. It's, it's just sad and that people are listening to this bogus information out there uh, from people who don't know, aren't reading the research and, and aren't seeing what the human body is actually doing physiologically. Our own body produces a hormone, a hormone designed to stop too much heme iron from getting in the bloodstream. That means that's intentionally built into our DNA that our body wants to stop heme iron from coming into this because it's oxidizing effects, because it's cancer causing effects, because it's damaging and, and free radical causing effects. It doesn't want too much iron in there. And plants have figured that out and plants went not only further to, uh, to, to do exactly what our bodies need, which shows us our physiology once again is designed to consume plants, not animal tissue. Yes, in starvation uh, situations where there's nothing else to eat, we can, in, in temporary short-term effects, do that and, and still survive. We're not in survival mode anymore. <laughs> we're, we're in a world where food is plentiful. There is no reason to consume animal products for health and nutrition, and there is every reason to show why those animal products on a sustained and regular basis consuming them lead to these advanced disease states, study after study after study. I'll post all of these studies I'm talking about in the comments section uh, on Facebook uh, and uh, on our Clean Machine at Clean Machine Fit too as well. And they'll also be posted up on our uh, Clean Machine Online site. This is really important information. So if you are so inclined to share this information, please do. Let's get this information out there. The doctors, the, 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 the large institutions are finally admitting we had it wrong all along, that it's not healthy to get large amounts of heme iron. It's not healthy to get those high dosages. It's, it's not a good idea to have that stuck in our colon calling, uh, causing uh, colon cancer. All of these are taken care of when you consume plants. So, you know, people ask me what's some good sources of plants. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that up on the screen uh, here just a second. Uh, let's see where we go here. There we go. So on the screen, oh, for those of you watching on Amazon Live, uh, some of the sources of uh, iron, uh, as you can see, oops other side, you can see, you know, one, two, three milligrams. So these are nice low doses of iron uh, that the body can use. But remember, mostly bound and chelated. So they're protective. So the body can break those uh, down and, and utilize the phytates, the IP6, when it needs to, to prevent cancer cell. It's got antioxidants to prevent oxidation. It's not going to lead to the formation of cancers in the colon or, or in the bloodstream too. Uh, and remember, the body is storing it. So it only needs a little bit at a time properly stored and that's why they're now recommending you know instead of 150 milligrams uh, down to 15 milligrams um, and it's probably even lower than that really needed but that's the recommendations of the scientific community now saying whoa we had it all wrong <laughs> way wrong and now we know uh, why this is even more important to get your iron from plant sources um, to prevent these advanced disease. So what's a good source? Well, you, you can see uh, you can see some of the uh, high iron sources over there. But I'd just like you to show you one more that's not up on there because most people don't know about it. And if you look right there, you will see 75% of your iron <laughs> needed in a single scoop of clean green protein. Thank you, Lentine. Your dark greens are your best source of iron, uh, and they are one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. And actually, clean green protein, Lentine, is uh, the most nutrient-dense plant we've, no we've found so far, and a rich source of iron, too, as well. So all of those great antioxidants and polyphenols protecting the cells and those great sources of vitamins and minerals all in a single serving of clean green protein with lentine. I have a, a cup every day. Last study I want to leave you with real quick because there is some uh, interesting information about it. In this study, they found that uh, vitamin C actually did not increase the uptake 
of uh, iron or uh, result in any difference in iron deficiency anemia. Uh, I'll post up that study too as well. The study for those of you on Amazon Live, the efficacy and safety of vitamin C for iron supplementation in adult patients with iron. Now, it may be different in food sources, but at least in this study, they showed no increase of iron uh, into the red blood cells um, using vitamin C. So that may not be the truth. I know there are some uh, circles out there saying that don't forget to take your vitamin C with your iron. That may not be the case. Um, but now that we know about hepcidin and it's our body's ability to try to block that when it's getting too much, having a lower amounts at regular basis, which is really getting those dark greens in on a regular basis. Um, let me take this down. Actually, I'm I don't realize I've been talking uh, without anybody seeing me. <laughs> there we go. And and getting that good steady state of dark greens and uh, dried fruits and 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 some of these other nuts and seeds that are high good sources of iron, but phytic bound to make sure those phytic acids are actually protecting your uh, your body from iron oxidation. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been a good one for me because I actually learned a lot from this research and. I actually like the people challenge me saying, hey, what about it? Because look, when I turned vegan 36 years ago, back in 1985, my father was an English professor, my mom a psychologist. And so most of their teachers and professionals were, were high IQ uh, children as well. And that's who I hang out with, you know, that's who I played with. So they started challenging me with high, very intelligent uh, questions and I didn't have answers for them. So I've spent the better year of the last 36 years of my life trying to find the answers of why plant nutrients are so much better for us than animal nutrients. Check out why vitamin K is better from plants, vitamin K2 from plants because of our microbiome. Why omega-3s are better from plants than EPA and DHA from fish oil. I show every single one of these of why plants are the better source of nutrition over and over again, even the proteins and the methionine, type in methionine dependent cancers. Uh, animal products are very high in the amino acid methionine. Methionine feeds cancer cells. Plant-based are lower in methionine. They've shown lower methionine or reduction of methionine in the diet actually prevents the creation of cancers. Many studies on that one too as well. So it's what's in the animal proteins, the heme iron, the creation of TMAO, the, the methionine, every single one of these things leading to disease states and the causality, the connection, the actual mechanisms of action in the cells are all there. The science is there now. There's no reason to be eating animal products if you want to avoid most of the major diseases that we're experiencing right now. Well, again, once again, I, I hope you enjoyed this and please share, please give it a like, uh, please talk about this, please share the studies, even if you don't wanna share, I totally get it um, because you know we sell products, that's okay, I, I'm not offended. I'm more about getting this education out there to improve people's health. It's not about being right or wrong. It's not about being in the vegan camp or dogma or anything like that. It's about, can you get the most out of life? Can you not suffer? And, you know, when we think about how eating plants instead of animals creates a lot less suffering <laughs> to the animals, obviously, but to ourselves, I don't want to see you suffer. I suffered severely to the point of, of depression, to the point of which I wanted to end my life several times. I don't want that suffering for anybody else. And I see parent after parent after adult, people my age all dying. How many times have I read people my age already dying of heart attacks and stroke and diabetes? Uh, and, and it's sad and I don't want that. I want to help prevent people from suffering. It's why I do what I do. I try to be a good example, uh, being a national uh, physique and bodybuilding champion, drug-free. I don't take any medications. I don't even take aspirin. I do it all through nutrition. 58 years of age, my skin's really healthy. Um, this is what I want for you and not because I want to be right or it's a, about the vegan camp versus the omnivore camp or the carnivore camp. It's not. It's about health and nutrition and you living the best life that's possible for you. That's what I want. That's why I go out and find these plants 
that aren't in the mainstream, aren't available in our food supply because they have such healing and amazing nutritional properties. That's what I've got for you. Stay tuned for next week. I have a special guest, uh, Ella Magers, who is a, one of our ambassadors. She is incredible. She's going to be talking about all the cool projects we did, including last month's uh, give back to uh, Hogs and Kisses, a wonderful animal sanctuary that she's a part of. So hope you turn in, tune in for that one as well. And again, like, share, and um, and get this information around. I'll, I'll post all the studies in the comment section so you can pick them up there, or you can pick them up later on Clean Machine Online. I'll post them in the comment section there as well. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next week.